This is the value of wrestling, the revolutionary force in wrestling podcasting. back well i don't know what to tell you ladies and gentlemen this is the value of wrestling this is the big time rant this is episode 87 i believe 87 episodes of the big time rants isn't that incredible what a time it has been and here we are sitting on 87 episodes and we are back today after a beautiful wrestlemania night two sunday night wrestlemania beautiful beautiful ending to a beautiful beautiful story and we are here to talk about the love story of professional wrestling and the bitterness gone last night was an amazing story some people are going to agree with some of the ways things went down some people are not that's okay that's what professional wrestling is all about what you love and what you hate and that's what brings this community together and allows us to love professional wrestling because we get to talk about what we love and what we we get to listen to other people and what they love and we get to debate it out and we get to have fun with it and last night wwe wrote one of the greatest love stories wrestling you're ever going to see after all this time after the reign and dominance of roman reigns cody rhodes through it all with a little help from a couple of friends yes was able to take down the evil empire of roman lambs the collapse has happened we have a new wwe champion a new wwe undisputed universal champion i don't know what they're going to call the championship when uh samantha Irvin announced it was a wwe champion when he was on the um the uh, media show after uh, they said that Byron Saxon called it the WWE champion. He is listed on the WWE uh, roster page as the WWE undisputed WWE universal champion. So I don't know what we're going to see the belt being called. Uh, hopefully they kind of just go back to being the WWE champion. I don't know if we need all the universal uh, stuff tied into it, but we will have to wait and see. Um, what a great night what a what a story of wrestling what a way for wwe to shut the book on the past to to just basically turn it around and show you that we're moving far away from what is sports entertainment back into professional wrestling we had things that we never thought we'd see in wrestling happen we had moments that we haven't seen in wrestling in decades we saw family in the ring celebrating with their champion we saw friends we saw the big moment of all the wrestlers that were unable to overcome Roman due to all the ways Roman fought to survive and keep that title around him. There was a beautiful moment with that. With all these people who had been through there, who had been there, who had experienced the path and the road that Cody had to go through. And it was a beautiful moment. And then we saw all the things. We saw Triple H come out to the ring and congratulate uh, Cody. Oh, the, uh, the the moment Cody going around thanking everybody. We saw a celebration, which is not usually the thing. We see somebody hounding up the belt, and we move along, and we go along. And um, what a new era we're in. What a change we're in. And um, I can't wait to see how that all plays out going into the future. Monday Night Raw should be incredible. A lot of things up in the question. What's next for Cody? What's next for Roman? Will we find out anything tonight? Are we going to have to wait till Friday? Are we going to get a new title? Are we going to see the reemergence of the big winged eagle belt in some form or fashion or another? It is going to get very interesting and it's going to get very fun. And um, I can't wait to see how it all plays out going forward. But then we have the bitterness. You know, all this week it's been back and forth. Uh, fans who came out, people came out and said that WWE bullied. AEW all week. They just they just bullied him. Triple H said that WWE doesn't compete against anyone but themselves. So WWE doesn't see AEW as competition. So they're bullying them. Triple H talked mad smack about Will Ospreay not joining WWE because he doesn't want to work a harder schedule. That Triple H can't understand a wrestler's priorities um, because he, he thinks they should be here to grind and work the hard schedule and be here every day. Um... Uh, they bullied WWE because CM Punk went on and talked all this mad smack about AEW, calling him not a real company, calling him an indie company, telling Tony Khan he's not a real blah, 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 blah. So we got all this stuff. Um, and AEW 
people or fans out there saying that WWE was bullying AEW. And my question to you is, what did they do to really bully AEW? Because let's look at the definition of a bully. A bully is a person who habitually seeks to harm or intimidate those he, they perceive as a vulnerable. So, uh, they didn't harm AEW in any way, so I'm assuming they're intimidating AEW. And if an AEW feels intimidated by WWE saying whatever they say, if WWE says, ah, uh, we only compete against ourselves, um, and, it, and that can be perceived that AEW is not competition to WWE. Is WWE really, is AEW really intimidated by that? You're telling me that Tony Khan and AEW are intimidated that Triple H, WWE, whoever you want to label it as, says that the only competition we have is ourselves. Not acknowledging AEW, not saying that AEW is competition, even though AEW is not. On the level of WWE, yes, they have big TV value with T and e, uh, TNT and TBS. They are on the Turner Network, the Turner Broadcasting System. They're part of the Warner Brothers Discovery Channel system. They're part of that family for now, because that that time for exclusivity with uh, Warner Brothers and AEW is almost up. AEW can start going to any other channels. Why is W uh, Warner Brothers Discovery letting that time slip away? Why is AEW not a priority to them? Why do they only almost make bed with WWE? Is there something to be said there? Is the WWE Warner Brothers Discovery as interested in AEW as we think? Or are they interested, but Tony Khan is trying to give them ridiculous numbers that they just don't feel it's going to meet? If we look at the ratings, if we look at the attendance to the venues, AEW is nowhere near on the same level as WWE. Are they an indie fed? Some people say, yeah, they're, they're an indie fed trying to be important. I think they're just hanging just a, a small amount above an indie federation with TV time. They have three TV shows. One does between 700 and 800,000 average viewers a week. And the other ones are flopping shows. And now the main show every week, every day that Dynamite comes on, Tony Khan has to get extra time to overrun his show instead of booking his show accordingly. So. He goes to Warner Brothers Discovery, they give him extra time to appease him. He buys it. Who knows what really happens back there behind that. But he gets extra time to run over because he can't book his show properly. And then in that run over run, does he really give you anything interesting? Does he really give you anything that he couldn't have put in those in that two hour time slot and finished up before that? Is there anything that's a cliffhanger, a leaving moment? Not really. The attendance's not there, the viewership's not there. Tony Khan can book great wrestling matches. He has some of the greatest wrestling talent in the world of professional wrestling, yes. But making characters interesting, he lacks on. If we're going to base it all on in-ring action, and it's going to be an in-ring action company, and that wrestling is all that matters, storylines don't matter, then that's what it needs to be sold out, and that's what it needs to be, and then we'll accept it as that. And those of us who are just like, okay, it's cool. We might watch it here and there, but I mean, a lot of us would probably jump out of the pond and say, you know, there's nothing to talk about here. It is what it is. But there's nothing interesting because there won't be anything. Great matches are great, but once you run out of time, run out of those matches, then what? What you gonna do? Right? So WWE's bullied them. Uh Triple H made the statement that, you know, if you don't want to be here for the grind and put in the effort, if you want to go work an each year schedule, then you know, I don't want you. How is that bullying? I, I'd really like somebody to define how that is bullying. And, and he didn't say anybody by name, but everybody wants to go, oh, he didn't take, he's mad at kid, he did get Will Ospreay. He's not mad that he didn't get Will Ospreay. He may have made an offer to Will Ospreay. Oh, Will Ospreay didn't want it. He wanted to go to AEW, and that's fine. It didn't work out for WWE to get Will Ospreay, but Triple H doesn't care. Triple H doesn't need to buy names to make his company. Would Will Ospreay be a great addition to WWE? Sure. There's a lot of advantages to it. Would he fit into the WWE Style? I don't know. I don't know if that style of wrestling would be what is best for Will Ospreay. Could it have been great? Yeah, there could have been something special there. When we had great matches with Will Ospreay and Cody Rhodes, Will Ospreay and Seth Rollins, Will Ospreay and Kevin Owens, Will Ospreay, and a whole plethora, Randy Orton, a whole plethora of people in WWE. Sure, sure. But it's Triple H being bitter. Triple H made a statement. If you're not coming to the WWE, if you don't want to sign on the contract because you want a lesser schedule, you want it to be a little easier, you don't want to be here for the grind, you don't want to put it here an effort in. I understand why he's like, I don't want you here. If you don't want to put that effort, if you're not, it's not about 
wrestlers value what the wrestlers perceive as important to them. Triple H is saying, if you don't want to sign with us and put in the work and the effort to work a WWE type of schedule and put all that in, then that's fine, but I don't need you. I'm glad we didn't get together because you're not, you know, this is not what you want. If you don't want to live that style, if you don't want to live and breathe WWE, if WWE isn't kind of part of that end-all, be-all in your wrestling career, then why be there, right? That doesn't mean WWE needs to be all your life. That's not what Triple H is saying, but people want to fill it in and, and, and manipulate the wording that Triple H is trying to say to, to feel their message. That's the key. You want to turn around and go, oh, Triple H is booing Will Ospreay because Will Ospreay didn't sign with him. No, Triple H is saying, hey, these guys didn't want to work the WWE schedule. They didn't want to put it in the grind. They didn't want to put in the effort that WWE schedule. They wanted to go work a lesser schedule. That's fine. They can go work that schedule. They can go live that style, and that's fine. But if they want to be here and put in the grind and put in the effort, and we don't know, maybe maybe he was telling Real Osprey, if you come here, well, you're going to have to go to the Performance Center and, and, and get accustomed to this and work, you know, this. You may have to go to NXT, and Will Ospreay may have felt, if we're even talking about Will Ospreay, but since everybody subjectively wants to put Will Ospreay in that, we'll run with Will Ospreay. So, you know, the conversation could have been, well, I need you to go to the Performance Center and train to do the WWE style. Will Ospreay, well, I don't want to do that. And that's fine. And then he goes, you may have to go through NXT. We want to introduce you through the levels until we get you accustomed with the WWE style. And Will Ospreay's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to pull. I don't want to do that. I just want to go wrestle. I want to be doing this. I want a lighter schedule. And Triple H may have been like, hey, I can't offer you that type of schedule. He went and signed with AEW. And Triple H is saying, and it doesn't have to mean it's Will Ospreay because he didn't say Will Ospreay. He's talking in general. If you don't want to come here and work the schedule or the demand that WWE has, if you're not going to put in that grind and the effort to work through the system, to learn the WWE style, then Triple H didn't need you. He doesn't want you. It's, it's just not going to work out. It's not going to be beneficial to you or WWE, period. That is not an attack or a bully on Will Ospreay or a bully on AEW. That is Triple H making a statement about if you're coming here, you're going to come here to work. You're going to put in the grind to become better, to be doing great things, to learn the WWE style and do it their way. You want to go to AEW and wrestle over there on a lighter schedule, an easier schedule, make more money maybe? Ooh, that's fine. Triple H didn't sit here and say he was wrong for going there. He just said, you don't want to work this schedule. And he didn't say anybody particularly, but everybody wants to subjectively put somebody's name in there to fit their narrative, to fit their message, to make them justify their rationality. Wake up. Tim Punk made the statement of Miz, are you going to tattoo the attendance on your shoulder? And everybody flipped out. Oh, Tim Punk taking shots at Will Ospreay. How's that a shot? How's that bully? He made a joke. Will Ospreay tattooed the attendance from all in last year on him. Cool. Tim Punk made a bad joke. Not even a bad joke, really. He just made a joke to Miz. Are you going to have a tattoo? Miz, who has no tattoos. It's not like you said, oh, you're going to be like that other idiot who tattoos his uh, attendance numbers on his arm. Uh, that would have been a direct shot at Osprey. That would have been some form of, quote unquote, kind of bullying. But he didn't say anything that you're going to get tattooed on your arm. It's a joke. Are we knowing that he's making a, a joke at uh, what all Will Osprey did? Yes. But are we really going to mount that up as, oh, Chuck, is she a puck is boy at AEW? Is boy is Osprey? Because he's making fun of Osprey for tattooing him, the, the, the number on his arm. And a joke. Joke. People can't take jokes anymore. I guess they choke on them, right? If you're choking on a joke, you're in big trouble in this day and age. Anyways. CM Punk on Monday had an interview with Ariel Hawani. He came out and talked about his relationship with AEW, the fallout with AEW, how he felt about AEW when it was all said and done. He did not have a time in AEW that it worked for him. He didn't enjoy the latter part of his career. He enjoyed the first part, which he did talk about, but he came to the realization that him and AEW are not meant for each other. Him and AEW are not going to see eye to eye. What AEW wants to be and what CM Punk's looking for are just not the same thing. And at the end of the day, yeah, Punk called him an indie fit. Now, if we want to say Punk bullied AEW, I guess you can, you know, take the scenario that he called it an indie company. He called it a company that's not about making money, just about making good matches. You can say he was being a bully because he called Tony Khan not a boss. These are his opinions, and I don't think he went out there with malice intent to belittle or put down AEW. His opinion, his feelings, his what he felt, what he experienced, and how he sees it 
is what he shared with you. And everybody wants to twist it to fit the narrative, to help them justify their narrative, instead of looking at what the man said. And the fact of the matter, the man keeps proving it more true than false, because now we got Tony Khan coming out on Dynamite this Wednesday, ready to show video footage from all in London, which he previously didn't want to show, but now, now he feels like he has to. But no, Tony Khan can't even be man enough to show us the footage. He can't come up and, and say, okay, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to show the footage. I'm going to express it. No, no, no. Which Tony Khan's not good on TV anyways, but he's going to take up TV time, take TV time away from talent to play into the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks, who we know it all out, got physical with Phil Brooks, CM Punk, and that both parties... Are at fault in that, but NDAs are signed, so we're not going to find out about All Out. But Tony Khan's going to send the Young Bucks, who already have issues with Punk, who already had their feelings hurt because Punk was out shining them on his own TV show and Collision was getting better ratings than Dynamite. And the Young Bucks have a narrative. They work with their little buddies and all their friends, and over a whole fact that somewhere in this whole weirdness that somebody thought their friend got fired because of CM Punk, which was never true. This spiraled out into this weird vendetta of the all elite buddy group, minus probably hang, uh, minus uh, Omega more or less. I don't think Omega was really playing into this as heavy as the Young Bucks and, that, and Hangman Adam Page and all these other people who got all oh, their panties twisted. Instead of trying to find a way to work with each other and be friendly and, and make money off a storyline that would have been one of the greatest storylines in wrestling. They all they got mad. So Wednesday night, we're going to see this video footage. Are people going to come watch? Yes. You know what it is? It's called a ratings pop. Tony Khan is doing this for a ratings pop. Is it going to tie into the Young Bucks taking on FTR? Is this going to be some narrative to create a storyline? I, I guess I, I would. That, that would be the only reason I feel you would need to take it onto your TV show and show this footage and talk about it. Again, here's the thing. What are we going to learn from the footage? What, what does everybody think is going to be on this footage? That, mm, it's going to expose CM Punk, you know? We're all going to see CM Punk get exposed. Are you ready to see CM Punk get exposed? Exposed at what? CM Punk said he choked out Jack Perry. He said he choked him. And it took Samoa Joe to break it up. Joe said break it up and told him to quit. Tony was yelling at him, supposedly. And then CM Punk quit. What are we going to see? A confrontation between Jack Perry and CM Punk? We're going to see a pushing shovey match. Uh, we're going to see hands on, on each other. Are we going to see CM Punk put uh, Jack Perry in a guillotine choke of some kind or a chokehold? Yeah. That's what we're going to see. Where are we exposing Punk? We've been told everything. What's the video footage really going to expose? Is it going to expose him yelling at Tony Khan? Is it going to expose him maybe going at Tony Khan? And Tony Khan's going to be... Maybe, but what's what is that exposed? What 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 are we what are we exposing? Other than that, Tony Khan is is a little bit juvenile and childish and bitter and uh, cringy. I'm gonna put this on dynamite to show the world what what does he expect to get out of this? And he's gonna and it's gonna be a twist of narrative to make the young bucks look good. Trust me, they're presenting it. You. Business. They got to make themselves look good. They got to make AEW look good. So it's not going to just be this full on footage. We're just going to be like, look. So, I mean, it's one of those really dumb scenarios that is um, very bitter and childish, and, and it's not going to help AEW in any way, I think. I mean, yeah, it may add into a storyline between FTR and the Young Bucks, but if this is how they want to react to. The M. Punk and his comments, that's fine. Now, people are saying, oh, WWE booed them all week. They have a right to show this. But why on, if, if they really felt bullied, if they really felt intimidated by WWE, which is really sad if you're a wrestling company that feels intimidated by WWE. Now, this isn't like WWE coming in in the early days when Redacted ran the company and took over territories and pushed these uh, owners of uh, territorial wrestling to basically sell or drive them out of business. No, now that's bullying, intimidation, and, and that's a whole different scenario. WWE isn't going at AEW. WWE isn't going into w AEW territory and threatening them or doing any of that crap. They're making statements on air that people are taking and running with and twisting it all around. And there's commentators who are like, oh, hey, WWE taking shots at AEW. Why? Because it 
pops the rating for them. It draws people's attention. It gets the spot, the, the pot stirred. Now, the good commentators, they're not going to dig that deep to pop all that stuff. Now, I come on here, I'm going to give you little pops here and there about different things because, you know, talking headlines are going to get people to click. And unfortunately, with YouTube, that's kind of what you have to do. But at the end of the day, if, if, if Tony Khan wanted to do this and, and, and show the footage and talk about what happened and, and defend AEW, then why not interview with Ariel Hawani? Why not interview with Chris Van Fleet? Why not interview with Renee Paquette? Make your own thing with Tony Khan, Renee Paquette on uh, AEW TV where you expose it, or not AEW TV, but with AEW involved. I really wouldn't put it on Dynamite, and well, at least not with the Young Bucks. But if Tony Khan really wanted to address this, then it should be Tony Khan being the boss, addressing the situation, showing the world that he is a boss and not a booch. It's basically he's going to sit in the back, let the Bucks go out and do his dirty work to keep the pot stirred, other than be a man and man up and face this on his own. If he was, if AEW really wanted to address this situation as AEW and make their side of the story heard, then Tony Khan, the boss, the owner, the CEO, the booker, the creative guy, everything AEW exists around is on Tony. So if Tony wanted to come out and release this video footage and talk about it and give the version of his side, of AEW side, or at least call in Jack Perry and let him and Jack Perry give their story, their side together. Or Shaq Perry's in New Japan Pro Wrestling telling everybody to shut up about him. But no, the Bucks are going to go out here. I think they've been buddies with uh, Jack Perry for so long and that they're going to come out and defend him and AEW from the evil CM Punk. And it's going to pop a rating. And all it tells you is AEW still needs CM Punk to pop the ratings. What else am I going to say? WWE didn't bully AEW. You, you can write a whole scenario. I mean, you can write a whole story and write the narrative and you can twist every little word and every little thing around. They weren't bullied. Did WWE say that uh, basically, you know, we compete against ourselves? Ah. So tell me where AEW is a competitive threat against WWE. Tell me what metric makes them competitive WWE. What metric? What makes them better than WWE? What makes them competitive to WWE? What puts them on the same level as WWE? Drop your comments in below. I mean, we are the value wrestling. We here, we respect everybody's opinion. You're free to share your opinion whether we agree or disagree. That's perfectly fine. That's what this is all about. This is what makes wrestling fun. We don't always have to see eye to eye. We don't always have to agree on everything. You may think that the AEW totally get bullied. I disagree wholeheartedly i think people are taking a narrative and spinning it and when we stop buying into these stupid narratives and enjoy wrestling for what it is whether it is you enjoy uh, aew more than wwe or wwe more than aew or if you enjoy them all and love to watch it all and just love the art of professional wrestling when we start buying into these stupid narratives then we can get back to enjoying wrestling when we can agree to disagree and be respectful of one another understand that we don't have to agree on the same opinions but it doesn't make me wrong doesn't make you wrong it's just human but the tribalistic idea is you're, you're, you're a part of the evilness. You're a part of this da-da-da, cringeworthy, da-da-da-da-da. World's full of too much anger. I'm telling you. You stop and just say, you know what? I don't agree with you. Here's my synopsis. This is what I think. And we look at each other and go, okay. I can see what you're saying. I can see what you're, you know, you see what I'm saying. And we can agree to disagree and walk away and be cool. Anger's not worth it anymore. WWE didn't bully AEW. They made statements. If you want to take it as bullying, good for you. WWE doesn't have competition right now. They have to compete against themselves. AEW was trying to get there, but now nowhere near that ballpark. It's going to be a while. Hopefully AEW does it. I'm not against AEW being competition for WWE. I want to see this competition exist. I know what it was like with WWE and WCW back in the day. Competition made this so much better. So, can Tony Khan and AEW get there? Sure. Are they going about it the right way right now? No. They're trying to get ratings pop off an old story that involves CM Punk this longer in their king, uh, company. Eddie Kingston had the right point of view. Why do I care what he says when he's not a part of my company? Tony! Sit down with Eddie. I think you can learn a lot. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, on the big time, this has been a big time rant 
on the value of wrestling. Make sure you hit the like, uh, the thumbs up, give this a big old like. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications whenever videos come out. Me and Mr. Clark will be here later tonight with your Monday Night Raw post show review, so be here for that. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot of great content. We've got a lot of great stuff coming. And we want you to all be a part of that. So let's be ready for that as I get out of here and I'll say see you later.